So in the previous two tutorial videos, we learned about how you can create an array using uh, two approaches. Either you can use the array initializer, or you can use uh, create an array of certain size with all the default values stored, zero for the integer case, and also you can use individual assignment to assign to the in, uh, different position one by one. So these are the two approaches we have to establish an array that looks like this, where the elements have nothing, uh, have no pattern that you can identify between the elements in the array. So now, for this particular video, we want to show you an interesting case, which happens quite often. In the case where you find that uh, the values for uh, the elements in the array can actually uh, be patternized, in that case, you can use a for loop uh, or while loop to actually uh, uh, initialize, initialize the array using a loop rather than uh, write it, writing them out individually. Okay, so now let me uh, show you how you can do it. Specifically, let's use this particular array as an example over here. Okay, so we have this array over here. We're still, got, we're, st we're still going to call the array IA, standing for integer array. But now let's say we're gonna have an array, just for uh, illustration. Let's say we have an array of size five. You can see for an array of size five, always the start uh, the starting index is zero. So that means the last index should be the size minus one, which would be five, uh, sorry, which would be four. Okay, so now let's try to see if there's any pattern we can identify for this particular array over here, you can see starting from 7, 10, 13, 16, and 19. So apparently this is an arithmetic sequence, which means there is a common difference over there. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 3, 13. 13 plus 3, 16. 16 plus 3, 19. Okay, so there's a common difference over there. So now we can use this pattern property to actually use a for loop to actually initialize the array elements rather than, well, first, what you could have done, you can use approach one, you can simply say uh, uh, integer array IA is assigned to using the brackets notation to enumerate 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. You can definitely do that, no problem. You can also use approach two where you simply just create an array of size five where each element simply uh, uh, stores zero to begin with. And then you can say integer uh, IA at position zero is assigned to seven, integer array uh, IA at position one is assigned to 10, and etc. You need to have five uh, different assignments. That uh, both approaches still work as we covered in the previous videos. But now we wanna show you two possible ways to really exploit such pattern between the elements. So now later on for your application in the lab or in the lab test, as soon as you find out this might be some pattern for the elements in the array that you can exploit, you should really try to use a loop to actually automate the pattern. That can save you quite a bit of uh, uh, work. Okay, uh, let's try to see how we can do it. I'm gonna show you two versions for patternizing this initialization. I'm gonna use 3.1, and oh, I just called it 3.0 and 3.2. But anyway, I'm gonna show you both, uh, both versions. For the first version, I'm simply gonna say the loop, uh, for both versions, I'm gonna use loop counter i. Okay, but now, but the loop counter i in both versions means a slightly different thing. Okay, for the first version, loop counter i simply denotes the value that is going to be stored, which means I'm going to initialize my loop counter to be seven. Okay, on the other hand, in the second version, the loop counter i simply means which turn in the arithmetic sequence you're going to uh, denote. In this case, I'm going to initialize the loop counter i by one. Okay, seven versus one. Okay, that's an interesting bit, but both programs are going to achieve the same thing. They're just equivalents. Okay, let's try. So now, first of all, let me create a uh, integer array. Let's say 3.1, how about that? So new class uh, integer array 3.1, or oh, actually apparently I cannot say dot. So now three underscore one, how about that? Okay, or we can say 3a. Okay, I think that'll be better. How about 3a? And then uh, generate the main method over here, okay? So now first let's try this, okay? What I would do is I'll simply say integer array and the name is simply IA is assigned to a new integer array of size. In this case, it would simply be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, as we learned from the previous tutorial video, after executing line number five, every element in array IA is simply just going to be zero, the default value, okay? So now I'm gonna use a loop to actually initialize the uh, all the elements, okay? Let me propose the following. 
as I said for version number eight, it's go uh, the loop counter r is going to be initialized to be seven. And now, how do we update the uh, loop counter i? We can say i plus equal three to say the first iteration i is going to be seven. For the second iteration, i will be incremented by three rather than i plus uh, plus, the usual case, right? And what should be the state condition? I would say as long as i is less than or equal to the last turn, which is 19, then I should stay in the loop. Okay, let's try. I can say, uh, let's say this version in this version, in this version, the value of loop counter i denotes the value to be stored at the array. Okay, that's something we want to have. Okay, and I'm going to use a little bit of trick over here. Okay, and we might need uh, uh, another variable over here called j. Okay, let me just try, uh, let me do that for you. Okay, so now for integer i is assigned to 7 and then i less than or equal to in this case it will be 19 right 19 is last term 19 and then i plus equal 3 okay i plus equal 3 over here is simply equivalent to i is assigned to i plus uh sorry i plus 3 you can write that as well Okay, it's completely up to you, but I'll just write it a little bit in a shorter form. i plus equal 3. Okay, over here. And now I want to say for every iteration, I'm going to store the value, right? I want to say i a at position something, I'm going to store exactly the value for i. Okay? But now the question is, what should the uh, question question mark be? The position. I might need some and I might need another helper variable to help me. Okay. So now let's try the following. Okay. I can simply declare another variable here. I can say integer j is simply zero. I'll make a note uh, comment for you. Uh, index of the array. Okay. So now I can simply say j over here. And then at the end of the iteration, I can say j plus plus. Okay. It looks complicated, but it's not that complicated. But we'll see exactly how things will go. Notice that the state condition for the loop over here is simply i less than or equal to 19. Somehow, this is going to make sure j will never become too large as an index for the array ia. But we'll see exactly how it is going to run. Okay, The way we set it up will just work. But I think uh, the first version is a little bit just for illustrating how things can be done in one way. But the second version, 3B, that I'm going to show you later, is going to be uh, the, the version I will recommend to you. Okay, but let's try. Just for uh, I think it's going to uh, help your uh, programming skill anyway. So after this, of course, I'm going to simply print out the array element one by one. Let's double check as well. Okay, so now let's simply say, uh, so now how do we print out the element one by one? Print out the element of the array one by one. Okay, that's what we'll do. And we learned that very well from the previous two tutorial video, I'll just write it out. For integer i, by the way, you can see that I can also declare i again, because as I said before, because i is inside the header of the loop. So the scope for this i is only within this particular for loop. There's no, there's no conflict with this particular i over here. Okay, i is visualized to be zero i less than i a dot length and then i plus plus. Okay, and we know very well how to we know very well how to trace this particular block of code. We did that in the previous tutorial about how to use iPad, uh, how to use a table to trace manually, how to use debugger. Please review the video if you have doubts. Okay, so now over here we're gonna say i a oh sorry system that out dot print line over here and then I'm gonna say uh, elements of i a at index i is and i a at position i okay something like that so now let's try okay so now if i go back to a package explorer and then right click on integer array 3a and then i say run as 
Java application. So what I get is I simply get 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. Okay, that works. Okay, everything works perfectly. Okay, but now we want to know why this block of code is going to do the trick. Okay, that's something we want to see. Okay, so what I would do is uh, I will simply just copy the lines of code and then I'll trace it on the iPad using a table with you together. Okay, so now it's really important for your understanding for version one and then we go to version two. Okay, I'm going to copy uh, this particular block of code and then I'll paste it to my iPad. Okay, this one here, starting from the initial array creation. Okay, so now let me move on to a new page over here. So this will be version 3a. Okay, so now I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, this is the block of code we have. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, hopefully that's visible to you. Okay, so now let's trace it. Okay, so now let's do the easy one first. So what happened for this line? When we execute this line over here, we're declaring an array variable called IA. So that means IA over here is going to point to an array of size 5. Okay, so this is how you draw it. So of size 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, indices 0, 1. You know what? Let me use a different color to tell you what the indices are. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now I a the length would just be 5. Okay, and then the value would just be default. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, as we, uh, as we explained in the previous video. Okay, that's for this particular line. So now let's try the following. Okay, so now what we will do is we're going to trace the rest of the, uh, the line uh, one by one. Okay, so now first of all, we have this particular line over here. We simply initialize a variable called j. So I will put j over here. Okay, j over here, initial value is simply just zero. Okay. And then we have another variable. Uh, and, uh, so now we enter, we try to enter the for loop. So we initialize the loop counter i to be seven. i over here is simply the value seven over here. So now we're gonna draw a table, okay? So now, you know what? I think to draw the table, let's draw it this way. Uh, let me use blue over here. Okay, let's have a table over here. So we're going to have the value for the loop counter and also the value for the stay condition over there and also the uh, the value for uh, whatever the loop body, the important expressions. In this case, we're going to trace the following. Okay, so now we're going to have over here, what's the value for i? And what's the value for? You can see the i, the loop counter over here. And also, what's the value for the state condition? i less than or equal to 19. Okay, and remember, at the end of each iteration, we're going to say i plus equal 3. And also, we're going to say j plus plus. So these are the two updates that are important to do. Okay, we'll make sure we do that. For this particular line over here, we're going to uh, care what's the i a j that would become okay i a j uh, uh uh is assigned to i okay so this is the assignment that we're going to perform for every uh iteration okay so we're going to see okay i think uh you know to re so for this part here since we're already we already we already got a diagram in the light blue so we don't need this part here all we need to do i think that'll be enough okay that's enough and then we don't need this box either because we already got a call in over there. Okay, I think that'd be enough. Uh, that's the best way. So you don't necessarily have to put every information in the table. You can have a combination of diagram and a table as long as they together make sense. Okay, I think this will make sense now. Okay, so now let's try the following. So now initially you can see J, uh, you can see uh, the value for I is uh, seven. Right, so I'll put seven over here. So that means I got have to evaluate this state condition here for the first time. Seven less than or equal to nineteen is going to give me true over here, right? 
So that means I'm going to perform this particular assignment over here. So what am I trying to do? What I'm trying to do over here is I'm going to do uh, over here. You know what? I change my mind. Okay. I can always change my mind, of course, when I try to change my code. So now when I say over here, okay, so now let me just do another one here. So the body over here simply says I should do uh, IA at position J is assigned to I. Okay, so what does that mean in this case? So that means I'm going to do IA at position, and we know the value for J is currently zero. At position zero is assigned to the value of I, which is seven. Okay, agree? Okay, so now what does this assignment do? At position zero over here, I'm going to assign that to seven. Okay, rather than storing zero, it's going to store seven instead. That's what this body of the loop will do. Okay, it's really important for you to follow the first one. Okay, all the others will be repeated. Okay, and then at the end of the loop, we're going to do J++, which means it's going to be rather than zero, it's going to be one. Okay, and then we're going to do I plus equal three over here. So that means you will be incremented from seven to ten. Okay, after that, we're going to evaluate the header of the loop again to see if i less than or equal to 19 is going to be satisfied again, right? So I'm going to see 10 less than or equal to 19, as we know, is going to be true. Okay, so what this will boil down into is we're going to execute the uh, body of the loop for the second time. So what we'll do is going to say i a at position j. And J value at the moment is simply just one. At position one is assigned to the value for I is 10. Okay, 10. So what does that mean? Position one is over here. And we are trying to reassign that to this particular value, which is 10. So rather than having zero is going to be 10. Okay, so far so good. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. And then we're gonna have uh, execute uh, J plus plus, which is going to be from one to two. And then we're also going to execute i plus equal 3, which is going to, uh, let me just, uh, so you don't really lose that particular update, okay? So i large, uh, plus equal 3, so that will go from 10 to, you will go from 10 to 13. So now 13 less than or equal to 19. So we're going to evaluate this for the third time over here. So it's going to be, again, true, okay? That means we're going to execute the body of the loop for the third time, okay? So now what, what's going to happen is we're going to have IA at position J, right? J over here. So J is currently on the value 2. So at his, uh, position 2 is assigned to, no, now for the value of I, the value for I is simply 13. So now 13. So now position 2 is simply here for IA and then reassign to this particular value, which is 13. Okay, hopefully so far I get an idea. Let's before complete it, let's finish that, okay? So now let's try the following. So now we're gonna increment the J over here from two to three. Okay, you can see the value for J simply tells us wh which position to go to to change the array, okay? Which position in the array to go to. And then we're gonna execute this particular I plus equal three over here, which means we'll go from 13 into 16. Now 16 less than or equal to 19 is still going to give us true over here. And then we're going to have uh, the body of the loop being executed for the fourth time. So now we got I A at position. So now what should be the position? Well, the value for J over here, right? For value for J is simply three. At position three is assigned to, uh, it should be the value for I Okay, the value for i is simply 16. Okay, val uh, index 3 over here, okay? And then it's gonna reassign to this value 16, so now it'll be 16. It seems like we got one more iteration to do. Let's do it, and then we'll see how exactly we're gonna exit from the loop, and then we're complete. So now, oh, okay, so now we're gonna, uh, at the end of the loop, we're gonna execute j++ again, so now j will be incremented from three to four over here, and then, we are simply just going to execute i plus equal 3 again. So we'll go from 16 to 19. Okay, so 19 
less than or equal to 19 is also going to give us true. That means we got one more iteration to do, maybe just one more. So now, uh, how, how do we do it? So now what the way we do it is gonna say IA at position uh, J, in this case, it is four. Okay, at position four over here is assigned to, so now the value for I, I is 19 over here. Okay, so now position four is exactly over here. And now we want to reassign that to 19. So now reassign that to 19. Okay, what to do? And now what we have to do now is we have to, at the end of the iteration, we're gonna say uh, J plus plus. And now four to five. Notice that five is no longer a valid index for IA, right? The largest index seems to be just four, but now five should not be used as an index for the array. However, we don't have to worry because the uh, state condition is being set up properly, the state condition here. Let's see exactly how, okay? So now after this, don't forget, we also have to increment I by three. So now from 19 to 22. So now when we evaluate this, particular state condition for one, two, three, four, five, the sixth time. So we're gonna get 22 less than or equal to 19. So what do we have in this case? Well, apparently we have false. As soon as we have false over here, that means we're going to bypass the body of the loop and then just exit from there. Okay, that's how we exit. Okay, so now that means we're done. We're never ever going to use the five over here as an index into IA. So we never get into uh, array index out of bound exception. Okay, so we are done. So notice that again, you can see it's a very uh, important pattern for you to observe for the for loop. You are just going to execute the body of the for loop as long as the state condition evaluate to true. And now as soon as the state condition evaluate to false, you don't really repeat the body of the loop anymore. Okay, that's for the first version. Okay, hopefully you can see exactly how that works. Okay, so now what I would like to do is, uh, I wanna show you the second version, but for the first version, I think it's really worth for you to understand as well, because we're using two variables that's being updated uh, for each iteration. It's a very nice case study for you at the moment. So please study that, even though I, will, I, will, uh, I personally won't recommend the second version, which is more general solution for you, okay? So now for the second version, uh, what I will do is, so what we have just done is the first version over here. For the second version, I would like to use the value of i to denote the turn. Maybe when i, let's say i start with one, okay? I will start with the value for one, think it this way. So now let me think about a formula. Let's think about math, right? So again, don't forget, Programming is uh, programming is highly based on math, okay? So whenever you want to figure out, especially for for loop or for loops uh, iteration in general, if you want to figure out exactly what you have to do, you have to think mathematically, okay? So now let's say this. If I say the loop counter denotes the ith turn in the arithmetic sequence. So we know that the first turn, okay, let me make it a little bit uh, thinner for me. Okay, you can see the first turn, the second turn, and the third turn. Okay, actually, you know what? Let me put it this way. So now if I just do a little bit table over here, if I got a turn over here, and also the turn can be one, two, three, four, and five, right? We've got five different turns, okay? So now we know that the value for the turn should be seven, 10, 13, 16, and 19, right? So now let's be a little bit more careful when we draw the table over here, okay? So now, okay, let's see exactly how we can figure out a formula for that, okay? So now this will be some formula. Okay, let me use a different color here, how about that? So now what would be the formula between the turn number over here and the actual value that is stored, okay? When turn is actually one, uh, we got seven, okay? When turn is actually two, we actually got 10. Let me, prof uh, let me propose the following formula, okay? So now, uh, the formula would be the value 
will simply let me talk on just math only. Value will be the turn that you talk about. We know the base turn is simply just seven, right? Plus the turn minus one multiplied by the common difference. Okay. Yeah, it's not complicated. Come on, right? So uh, let's try to see if that will work. Okay. So now let's try this. When when turn is simply just one, one minus one will give you zero. Zero multiplied by three will give you zero. Zero plus seven will just give you seven. So that'll be seven plus zero times three. Okay. What about when turn is equal to two? In that case, you got seven, which is the base turn of the first term plus. Okay, now two minus one will give you one. So that'd be one minus one multiplied by three. You also got 10, right? Also seven plus, and now you got turn is simply three. So three minus one will give you two. So that means you got two multiplied by three. That means you got 13. When turn is actually four, so seven plus. So now four minus one will give you three. So three times three, which will be 16, right? And also finally, when turn is equal to five, five minus one will give you four. Four times three, okay, seven plus, okay, four minus one will give you four times three, right? So the formula works, okay? Of course, of course, over here, if you don't quite like the turn minus one over here, it is okay to say, what about we simply start a turn rather than saying turn one, two, three, four, five. You can alternatively, you can say the following. Okay, I'll give you alternative version. You can say the turns number is simply zero, one, two, three, and four. In that case, you can simply say the value will simply be seven plus the turn multiplied by three. That will also work. Okay, I will let you double check with the formula. So now, if you want to use a green version of the formula, the turn number over here for the loop counter must start with zero. If you want to use a red version over here, the turn over here should really start with the loop counter i being one. Okay, either way. But I'll, maybe I'll put down both for you, okay? But now I will only trace one of them, okay? Hopefully you can see kind of the uh, mathematical analysis over here. It's not difficult, right? So now let's try the following. Let's now do another array uh, class, okay? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna copy three a and then make some modification over there, okay? I'm gonna say copy, okay? Right click on the class and say copy, and then right click and then say paste, okay? So I'm gonna say three b, okay? For three b, I'm gonna show you two versions. One will be using a green formula. The other one will be using the red formula. Okay, both work. Okay, so now in this version, the val. Uh, okay, so now we are in three. Oh, sorry. Let me close that. Otherwise, it will be confused. Double click on the version three B. Okay. Let me also clear the console. Right click and say clear. Okay. So now what we'll do is so now in this version, the value of loop counter i denotes the turn uh, sequence number in the arithmetic. Okay, turn number. Turn number. It can be turn. You, you can either calculate the turn as turn zero, turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, or you can say turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five. Right? Depending on when to start a turn number with zero or one. Okay. You can apply a different formula. Let's try version number one. Let's try the green formula first. Okay, the green one. So, the the advantage. Uh, let's try this. The advantage for uh, this second version here, I don't necessarily need uh, two uh, counters. Uh, I don't need two counters. In the case of a uh, 3a, remember we need uh, both i and j, right? But now I don't. I, I can get a uh, get along with just i uh, i and uh, just variable i. Okay, let's try this. For integer i is initialized to be zero. That's a turn number. Okay, i less than or equal to. Okay, so now I know that it's going to be turn zero, turn one, uh, turn zero, turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. Okay, turn four. And then 
each time I just go from one turn to another. Okay, so now let's apply the formula. Okay, and at the same time, I can be used as the index for the array starting with zero, right? And also it's incremented by one. So I can nicely, I can conveniently use it. Okay, but I'm gonna trace it together, okay? So I can say, in, uh, I can say I A at position I is simply assigned to, now what should I, I what should I do? You can, see the, you can see the value is simply seven plus, okay? And the turn number in this case, simply I multiplied by three. Why don't we try? If I simply right click on in, uh, integer array 3b, I'm gonna say run as Java application. Okay, I got 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. It works, okay? Let's try the second one. I think I should really trace both versions with you just for completeness. I really want you to understand the logic over here. It's really important for computational thinking. So now for version number two, uh, in this version here, the turn number starts with zero and we use the following formula okay we can say the value for the for the uh for the for this particular turn is exactly equal to uh seven which is the starting turn of the arithmetic sequence over here plus uh, the turn multiplied by the common difference okay and now let me try the second version in this first version over here. So now temporarily, can I just, oh, actually, you know what? Maybe I should just, uh, okay, keep both versions uh, active over here. Okay, what I should do is, what about I simply say this? Okay, you know what? I think um, to really make it clean, why don't I recreate 3C? Okay, how about that? Okay, so now, Let's say we right click on 3B and then we say copy. And then we'll say paste. And then we're gonna say 3C over here, okay? So we got 3A, 3B, and 3C. So now 3C in this second version over here, okay? The value of count uh, 3C the value of loop counter i denotes a turn number in the arithmetic sequence. Here the turn number start with one. And we use the following formula. Value is simply the same as seven plus turn minus one. Right? That's something we agreed before, right? On the iPad, right? It's turn minus one. That's exactly the table I'm trying to use over here to help you trace. Okay, and then I'm gonna say i is simply just going to be one. And then since we got five turns, so one, two, three, four, five. I can say i less than or equal to five. But now be careful. If you want to use i over here, you cannot because i will be one and then two and then three and then four and then five. Five less than equal to five is still true. But if you use i equal to five as an array index over here, five is out of boundary. So if you try to use i a at position five, it's going to give you array index out of bound exception. So now the trick you have to apply will be i minus one. Okay, that's why I also want to trace it together with you. Okay, it's really interesting. You really want to get used to playing with the playing with the uh, array indexing expression over here. And then I can say seven plus i minus one multiplied by three. Okay, i minus one term minus one multiplied by three. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the second version over here. Which version you want to use is completely up to you. Let's make sure it works. Okay. So now 3C, if I right click on 3C and then I say run as uh, Java application. Okay, so you got seven, 10, 13, 16, and 19, right? So that also works, okay? So now let's trace 3B and 3C all together, right? Okay, okay so now eventually what you want to do is you really want to go through uh, these two, uh, these two uh, approaches, right? Remember the very first approach, which is 3A, right? And then for the second approach, we got 3B and 3C, okay? So now let me just close everything here. So now let's try 3B first. I'm going to, first of all, uh, copy the code over here. So now let me copy this fragment of code over here, and then we'll trace it together and see if uh, if that would actually give us the right answer. 
we already see from the uh, the uh, the console that actually does pre uh, produce the right output, but we're gonna trace to see how exactly that works. So this will be 3B. Okay, let's do 3B first and then we'll do 3C. Okay, let's try. So now let's maybe first of all paste the program over here. Okay, over here. Okay, good. So this is 3B. Okay, let me just put the notes over here. So this is 3B. Okay, so now let's try to trace it. Number one, so you can see when we try to execute this line over here, we're simply going to initialize an array of size five. So IA is going to point to an array of size five over here. One, two, three, four, uh, actually not so good. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? For indices, I'm gonna put zero, one, two, three, and four. Initially, all the values would just be zero, initially, right? Zero, 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 default values. So now let's try to trace this particular for loop over here, okay? Let's see exactly, we only have one loop counter, but now let's be very careful because it seems to be a little bit complicated over here, okay? So now, actually this one is not complicated, 3C will be more complicated, but let's try. So it's good that we do this version first. Okay, so what, what expression do we want to trace? We want to trace for the value for i, we want to trace for the state condition i less than or equal to four, and also we want to trace for uh, what's gonna happen when we say i a at position i is simply assigned to seven plus i multiplied by three. We wanna see exactly what's gonna happen over here, okay? So now everything will just uh, be very obvious once we started tracing. So this uh, way of tracing using a table is very powerful by using hands, okay? So please try to pick out the scale. Okay, so now what we what we we'll do is we simply have a table over here with three columns. Okay, so now let's try. Eventually, we should expect to see we should have five rows where the state condition evaluated to true. That means we got five iterations to be executed, and the six uh the sixth time that we try to evaluate the state condition, it should become false, which means we don't try to execute the body of the iteration anymore and exit from the loop. That's what we can anticipate from the previous experience. Okay, let's try. Okay, number one, let's use green. Okay. So now for the very first time, we simply say i is initialized to be zero over here. So now we're gonna uh, evaluate this for the very first time. So zero less than or equal to four is going to give us true. Okay, so what should we do over here? What we should do is i a at position, i's value is zero, is assigned to seven plus i is zero, zero multiplied by three. So what does that mean? So this part over here, the value is simply just seven, right? So now I'm gonna store seven into position zero. Position zero is over here, so store seven into it. Okay, let's use a different color. So what about the second iteration? And now at the end of the iteration, we're gonna, uh, so at the end of the, that iteration, we're going to say i plus plus, right? So now, we, so now the new value for i would just be one, okay? And then once we go for one, we're gonna evaluate this state condition again for the second time. So that means one less than or equal to four is going to give us true. So what, what should we do now? We should say i a at position, right? We also have i over here. i is simply just one, okay? At position one is assigned to seven plus Okay, so now i multiply by three. i is simply just one. Seven plus one multiply by three. And what's this value over here? Well, that's uh, hopefully you can figure out, right? It's simply just 10. So that means we're gonna store 10 into position one. Position one is over here and store 10 into it. Okay, let's just go on uh, for completeness. And then we have pink over here. So now we're going to, uh, be, uh, by uh, at the end of the iteration, we're going to actually increment i by one. So now that means it's going to be two, okay? So now I'm gonna evaluate this particular state condition here for the third time. So two less than or equal to four 
is going to be true. And then we're going to evaluate i a at position i over here, which is going to be 2 is assigned to 7 plus i multiplied by 3. Oh, sorry, i in this case is simply just uh, 2. 2 multiplied by 3, in this case, you can calculate is simply 13, right? So store 13 and index 2. Index 2 is over here, store 13 into it. Okay, so far so good. Let's continue with another iterations. So now let's use blue. Uh, maybe use, uh, uh, how about red over here? And then I'm gonna have, uh, over here, uh, I'm gonna, at the end of the iteration, I'm gonna increment i by one, right? Don't forget, you always had to update a loop counter, okay? So now I'm gonna increment from two to three. So now it's gonna be three over here. So now three less than or equal to four is going to be still true. So what we get is, okay? So uh, I really meant to use a different color. I think that'll be better, okay? So now I think uh, it's gonna be three over here and then three less than or equal to four is also going to be true. And then what we can evaluate is i a at position i. So i a at position three is assigned to and then seven plus i, which is three. Three plus three. And in this case, it's going to be 16. Okay, so store 16 into position three of the array. Position three is over here and store 16 over there, right? That's what we'll do. At the end of the iteration, we're gonna increment i by one, okay? So that means it's now going to become, uh, let me say green, this green, or oh, how about this? It's going to become four over here, okay? So now four less than or equal to four, still true, okay? So now we're gonna do the fifth time. So now what we're gonna do is i a at position, you can see i over here is going to be four, is assigned to, so now seven times i, seven, uh, seven plus i is four, multiplied by three. So now you can see that it's simply just 19, right? You can see this calculation here is simply 19, right? 19 is going to be stored at index four. Index four is over here, and then you're gonna store 19 over here, at the end of the iteration, you're going to increment i further more by one. So now finally, what we're gonna get is, uh, great. It will go from four to five over here. As soon as it's five, though now what should we evaluate? i less than or equal to four is gonna be, five less than or equal to four is simply just going to be false. Okay, as you can see again, you can see for the very first one, two, three, four, and five times, the state condition is simply just true, which means we execute the body of the loop for five times. And then uh, the, for the very final time, it simply becomes false. As soon as the state condition becomes false, we're gonna exit from the loop, okay? So now you can see that we simply, we successfully reassign that to seven, 10, 13, 16, and 19. Okay, that's, that's why when you see from the program, it actually works. Okay, hopefully it makes sense to you. Okay, this is 3B. And I think I will still need to trace three, uh, 3C for completeness. I'll do that, okay? Let's be patient here because I think if we're learning, you really wanna be precise and complete. Okay, let's try to do it all together, okay? Of course, you can pause the video for now, try to do the tracing for 3C, and then once you're done, compare your paper with uh, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm going to do uh, for 3C, but let's do it. So now what I will do is I will double click on integer array 3C over here. Let's try to trace it, okay? So now what you will do is, uh, let me copy the program over here, okay? So now I'm simply just going to copy this part of the code over here, okay? This will be very interesting to trace because you got more complicated expression over here, for example, like I minus one, but you know, it's not that bad, okay? Uh, okay, we just need to gain experience on doing this, okay? Let me add a new page over here. Add a page below, let's get a template. Okay, let me just paste it. Okay, we simply just put it here. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. 
Okay, let me make it a little bit smaller here. Okay, so now let's do it. Okay, so now there are many things that will be very similar. So if I can speed up, I'll try to speed up. Okay, so now for this line over here, we're simply just going to have an integer array IA, which is pointing to this particular array, uh, this new array of size five. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. One, two, three, four, five. And then the indices zero, one, two, three, and four. And the element will simply just be zero, the, the default value to begin with. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, try to execute this loop over here, right? Let's say for the very first time, uh, and what should we trace? Let's say we try to trace the value again for loop counter i. Okay, let me just give you a little bit more space. Uh, try to trace the loop counter i and also the expression i less than or equal to five. And then we want to really calculate what is i minus one. There's a reason for that because you can see i minus one is used over here and also used over here. Okay, so I'm gonna separate out. And also we're gonna see the loop body is gonna be i a i minus one is assigned to seven plus i minus one multiplied by three. Okay, it's really important to trace this. Okay, so now let's try that. Okay, let's uh, draw the table, get it ready. Okay, and then we got all the way here. We got all the way here. Okay, second column and third column. Okay, let's try. So for the very first iteration, we're gonna initialize the uh, loop counter. Okay, let's try the first one. Okay, let me try that. Okay, so now for this one here, so i is going to be initialized to be one, one over here. So now one less than or equal to five is going to be true, right? So now I'm gonna evaluate this for the first time, it's gonna be true. So that means we're going to go into, uh, and what's, we're gonna go into the body of the loop, okay? Now at this point, what's i minus one? i minus one will be simply one minus one, will be one minus one, which is zero. Okay, you can actually see that very clearly, right? I'll just put zero here, right? Because one minus one, which will be zero. So now that means this body of the loop is going to be boiled down into i a at position. Now i minus one is zero, is assigned to seven plus i minus one, which is zero, multiplied by three. This corresponds to exactly the first row in 3b, okay? So now, what do we do? Well, exactly this value over here would just be seven, and then to store in position zero. Position zero over here, and then we're gonna store that into seven. Okay, the same thing. You can see even though the starting point for i is different, compared with zero over here, and also the state condition is different compared with this over here, and also the uh, body of the loop is different compared with this, but the effect will just be the same. That's the interesting part for programming, okay? So now, let's try that. Okay, so now let's try the following. So now let's, let's try the, uh, at the end of the uh, iteration, we're gonna say i plus plus, okay? So that means i will be incremented from one to uh, two. Okay, so now we're gonna say two less than or equal to five, it's just going to be true. That means we're gonna execute this particular body of the loop for the second time. Now i minus one will just be two minus one will be one, okay? So that means over here, we're gonna say i a at position one is assigned to seven plus i minus one, which is one, multiplied by three. Okay, we know very well this should be 10. So store 10 into position one store 10 into position one. And then we're gonna increment the value of i by one. So now increment that into to two, from two to three. So now we're gonna evaluate this particular state condition again. So three less than or equal to five is going to be true, okay? That means we're gonna execute this body of the loop for the third time. So now what's i minus one? Three minus one would be two. So that means i minus one here. So i a at position two is assigned to seven plus i minus one is two. Two times three. So now we got simply 13. So store 13 into position two. 
Position two, store thirteen into it. So far, so good. At the end of the iteration, we're gonna increment i by one. So that means we increment that to uh, from three to uh, four. Okay. So now, when we evaluate this state condition again for the fourth time, four less than or equal to five is going to be true. Okay. And what about i minus one? i minus one will be four minus one, which is three. So now when we evaluate the body of the loop over here, we're going to have i minus one, which is four. So i a at position, sorry, i i minus one is three over here. I circled the wrong thing. Okay, it should be at position three is assigned to seven plus, and then i minus one over here, which is three times three. In this case, it would be uh, 16, right? So that means we we'll store 16 into position three. Position three and store 16 into it. It seems like I got one more iteration to go. Let's do it. Okay. So now we want to do another one. Let me use maybe uh, green over here. Okay. So now uh, at the end of this iteration over here, we're going to execute I plus plus over here, right? You can see I plus plus over here. So now it's going to be incremented from four to five over here. So now five less than or equal to five is going to give us true. Okay, so now that means we're going to go into the body of the loop for the uh, fifth time. Okay, so now what's i minus 1? i minus 1 would be 5 minus 1 would be 4. So now that means uh, here i minus 1 is going to be i a at position 4 is assigned to 7 plus i minus 1, which is going to be 4 multiplied by 3. Okay, so this value over here is simply just uh, 19. Right? So store 19 into position 4. Position 4 over here, store 19 into it. Okay? Seems like we are done, but we're not sure yet. Now, at the end of this particular iteration, we're going to, again, execute the update part for the loop. So now that means we're going to uh, update, uh, increment the loop counter i from 5 to 6. So now we're going to say from 5 to 6. So now when we evaluate a state condition again, six less than or equal to five is going to be false, right? So that means we don't actually try to go into go into the loop. So we're gonna bypass this part over here and then exit from the loop directly. Okay, that's how we uh, avoid having an infinite loop with a, a proper state condition. Okay, again, as you can see the pattern over here, what we have over here is, you can see for the very one, two, three four five for the very first five checks on the state oh sorry highlight the wrong thing for the very first one two three four and five for the very first five checks on the state condition over here is simply true that means we execute the body of the loop one two three four and five five times and then as soon as the uh, state condition becomes false, that means we simply stop executing the body of the loop, okay? So now, again, it's really important for you to see for this particular video here, you can see the actual coding part is not many lines. However, the way we tweak the logic is really important for you to understand exactly why we can go from one version to another, okay? So now, really, please make sure you understand exactly how we did the version A over here, Okay, for version A, we did it here, and also for version B and C, we did it here with some formula. You want to un understand all the three versions, and we did the tracing for all the three versions very carefully together with you using the uh, tabular notation, okay? If you go back to uh, the coding over here, to make sure you know all the three versions, of course, each of the versions worked, but if you really ask my personal advice, which one should you really try to adopt? I would say maybe try to get more comfortable with either version B or version C. So these are more general solution for you to apply to other similar problems. Again, the lesson to learn is whenever you see that uh, your array elements have, uh, your, uh, if the values to be stored into your array has certain pattern that you can observe, in that case, you don't really have to have just a, a separate assignment to initialize them. You can simply use a loop to initialize them. That's actually a much better way to do it. Let's say if I want to initialize an array of arithmetic, sequ uh, of arithmetic sequence of size 1000. In that case, well, I'm afraid you just don't want to use approach one or approach two to uh, like either an uh, initializer or to use separate assignments. That's not 
what you want to do. You want to use a loop which will simply iterate through 1,000 times for you. The code you had to write will be the same line of code. Okay, so that's really the lesson to pick up from this particular video. Review all the concept and also how we trace the program before you go to the next one.